Certainly the conflict in the Middle East has diverted attention from the war in Ukraine, but that war goes on. Uh, just today, um, Russia destroyed um, a, I guess it was a Liberian flagged ship in the port of Odessa, killing the pilot. Um, it's been attacking Ukrainian infrastructure. Uh, the Ukrainians are fighting valiantly back, but uh, the war seems to be at this moment in a dynamic stalemate. Um, and the Ukrainians, you know, continue to need assistance from the West, particularly from the United States. And of course, that's up for question at the moment. It is up for question, but so far, the United States has pledged and given quite a bit of aid to the Ukrainians. Are you concerned? I mean, I guess if you were a decision maker in Washington, would you how much would you like? What would you need to see in order to, for you to say, OK, that's enough aid for Ukraine? Well, I, mean, I think we have to continue supporting them. Um, if we don't send them more assistance and more weapons, it's going to be much harder for them to push back against the Russians. I think there'll be probably somewhat of a lull in the fighting in the winter, even though some of these attacks will go on. But we know that in the spring, the, the fighting will start up again, and we need to equip the Ukrainians so that they can continue uh, to try and push back the Russians. But, but if it's a stalemate, then... What's the motivation for, and forgive me because we're talking about, you know, we have to remember this is people. This is people, yeah. Yeah. But a lot of that gets lost, I think, in the conversation when members of Congress are, are talking about budgets and there there's a lot of tension with providing aid to Ukraine. And there has been for more than two years at this point. Um, how, do you, how do lawmakers justify continuing to send aid if it's just a continued stalemate? Well, uh, first of all, it's in our national interest not to have Russia win this war. If Russia succeeds in subduing Ukraine, uh, if that's not where Russia is going to stop, it'll probably set its sights um, further west, including possibly if you read some of the things that were published today, uh, written by the former president Medvedev, it's sights on Poland. Uh, and the U.S. doesn't want, you know, we don't have any uh, boots on the ground there. Our uh, men and women aren't dying for this, but it's in our interest to make sure that we don't get sucked into another even bigger war in Europe um, if we don't support Ukraine, um, you know, as it fights back. Well, and this is where, you know, we so wanted to have you back because it was understandably, you understand why in the past month our, our we have shifted our focus. It feels like as a world, you know, how much stress can we geopolitically focus on? Both situations are dire and important, uh, but we have shifted to what's going on between Israel and Hamas at this point, but I wanted you to come back on for us to understand um, Vladimir Putin and what his goals are here with what he is trying to do. It doesn't necessarily stop with Ukraine, correct? That's correct. I mean, he's first of all believes that he can wait this out. Um, he can, the war will go on in 2024. Russia has more men that it can send um, as cannon fodder uh, than Ukraine does. Uh, it has a, three times the population and they're getting, you know, ammunition now from North Korea. We know that they're getting drones from Iran. So he wants to wait this out and hope that someone enters the White House in 2025 who will say enough, we don't want to support Ukraine anymore or that there'll be Ukraine fatigue maybe in some European countries. So he's waiting for Western resolve to collapse, which it remarkably hasn't yet. Um, but his, again, his goals don't stop at Ukraine. Uh, they, it, there might be a pause. Uh, mm -hmm. He wouldn't, you know, Russia wouldn't immediately then turn its sights on another country. But in the longer run, as long as he's in power and he's running for re-election uh, next year and he will surely get re-elected, as long as he's in power, those aims, I think, aren't going to change. So he has enough men. Does he have enough money? I mean, can he break his country, Vladimir Putin, in his fight, his conquest of Ukraine? He has enough money. I mean, the Russians are still making money on selling oil and gas, uh, you know, despite all of the uh, sanctions and everything. They they are making money from the hydro hydrocarbon sales. Um, their uh, economy is set to grow, predicted to grow, in fact, um, I think by about 2% next year. They've recovered a bit and um, the economy is doing better than it was before. So they can continue this fight. That's that's what's so surprising to me. I mean, we spoke to you, Angela, early on mm -hmm. in the and we've been speaking to you throughout the mm -hmm. conflict. But yeah. the, the general consensus was this was going to be quick and it's been anything but quick. Um, how do you think this war ends as we approach the third year? 
Right. Well, it's, you know, this this is the $64,000 question that everyone is asking. I mean, at some point, it might be that both sides recognize that neither of them are going to achieve their full aims and that they do sit down and negotiate. Um, that's still what we want to avoid is another frozen conflict, mm -hmm. uh, which is to have some kind of agreement but which is really only temporary and an agreement that would involve Ukraine, unless it makes more progress territorial, it would territorially, it would lose some more territory. Um, that might end the fighting. Uh, you could have a ceasefire, you could end the fighting, right. uh, but that's not a longer term solution to this. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, um, you know the, the desired solution would be obviously for Russia to withdraw its troops and to renounce uh, the, you know, territorial claims on these areas that it claims to have annexed, but which it doesn't fully control. Right. Uh, but that that may take much longer. So it probably would be, you know, in the short run, at least some kind of a ceasefire and a temporary solution to this. A longer term solution is much harder to envisage.